All right, good morning, everyone. God bless. Um, we're happy to be here today in um, our Bible study. We hope that uh, you have a blessed time this morning. We continue talking about spiritual warfare today. Just want to remind you, if you have any questions, please feel free to email questions that you would like to discuss in the future to Pastor Hector or GardenChapelChurch.org for our general Bible knowledge study. So let's begin. These are some of the future topics. Uh, we had also another question. Um, here we have the that are included in there also birth control and also what do Arabic Christians call God or Jesus. So that's another one, one of the ones we added not long ago. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you, Father, for this opportunity you gave us to gather here this morning. We pray, Lord, that you speak to our lives, that you give us an understanding, Father, of your word, Lord, and of what you want us to do in the way that we live. Uh, help us, Lord, to be able to grow in you, grow with you, grow for you. Father, and may other people be able to see your grace, your kindness, your love, your mercy in the way that we treat them, the way that we act day in and day out. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, and thank you. So we know that you open up our minds, Lord, today and speak to us in a deep manner. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so we've been talking about disarming. Disarming the devil, spiritual warfare. And right now, we have the, the opportunity today and the blessing to continue studying the word. And we're going to now move to study, discuss a little bit about the topic of demons. And we start with these questions, are demons real? Because... Some people actually don't even believe that dem demons are real. So I ask you, I know Sister Jeannie is here. Sister Jeannie, are demons real? What do you think? I think there is definitely evil and dark forces out there. Amen. And that's a, that, that's a good way to put it. Um, evil and dark. And then good and gracious, if you wanted to also say, say the opposite, which is what we're talking about today. Demons, and next week we're talking about angels. So let's get going. I will tell you this. Um, people have a lot of beliefs. And part of the problem with the beliefs is the fact that they want to have these beliefs because that's what they think. There is just no foundation. Um, it's like, I don't know if this has ever happened to you. You, let's say you invite someone over to your house and you make a meal for them. You say, oh, I made you this beet salad. You're like, oh, I don't like beets. Beets don't taste good. I, I just, I've never liked them. And then you say something like, oh, so when you tried them, you didn't like it. No, 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 I never had them. I just don't like it. Okay, well, you don't necessarily know. You're making a, an, an assumption in your mind. And that often happens when we think about, about demons and even angels. Um, people have the tendency to whatever they watch the movies, whatever they were told, whatever they read in fiction books, all that information gets added together pretty much to, to turn into, this is what I believe. And because this is what I believe, that's it. And they'll argue, they'll argue and argue and argue. But at the end of the day, where we get the information from is the most important thing. If you're gonna go in the internet to get information, as a matter of fact, I actually, today I'm sharing an article from the internet that was written by a pastor. But of course, before I, I included it, I read it. Right. And that's really important that we have to make sure we look at everything 
on the face value in the sense of what does the Bible say? So make sure you have your Bible handy because we're going to be reading a, a few scriptures today. So what are demons? So in ancient times, demons were thought to inhabit the atmosphere surrounding the earth. Paul called Satan the ruler of the kingdom of the air. That's in the Bible. This title reflects his status as a spiritual being who exercises authority over unbelievers. Now, we had explained that that is one of the, one of his names. <clears throat> Sorry. And um, he does, talking about Satan, he does have power. And that in itself sometimes seems shocking to people. But the devil has power. Now, do demons have power? What do you think? I think they have some power, but I don't think any of them, nor Satan, has more power than God has power. Yep, and that's a, that, that's a great way of looking at it. I mean, you could look at it like this, for example, like let's look at it from a business perspective, okay? You have, you have, um, let's look at, uh, you know, when Apple, the, 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 the computer uh, store, Steve Jobs, you know, when he was alive, like he became very famous because, you know, the, the Apple um, industry did so much. So if there was an Apple store around the corner, they had the ability to control and do a lot of things, right? But the main control came from where? From the headquarters where Steve Jobs was, because he was the one that pretty much, you know, um, pushed out applications and did this and did that. Um, so wh when it comes to when it comes to the devil, um, it's very similar. So the devil has a lot more power, right, than than the demons per se. However, the devil is sending out and and pretty much um, plotting what is going to happen with the people and with the community, society, nations, and so forth. But even though that's what, you know, the abilities that they have, none of that compares to the power and the authority that God has whatsoever. Perfect example. And I hope this, this helps you to kind of see it in, in application. We know about the story of Moses, right? So Moses is with Aaron, put the staff down. What happens to the staff? It turns into a what? Serpent. It turns into a serpent, okay? And then after it turns into a serpent, what, what, does the, what do the magicians of the court, of the court do? The Pharaoh's magicians, what did they do with their staffs? They threw them down and they turned into a serpent. So in other words, it became almost like a, like a magic competition at that moment. Okay. And now you imagine the Pharaoh is watching this and he thinks that Moses is coming and Aaron with this like magical powers. And then these magicians come out and they do the same thing. What do you think the Pharaoh thought at that moment? Well, they did this, but look, my guys can do it too. Big deal. What type of power do you have? What authority do you have? But then what happened to the serpents from the magicians? Bible says that Moses' serpent, the, the staff, ate, swallowed, the other serpent, the other snakes. And Moses, you know, they went, grabbed the, the, the snake, the serpent, and he turned back into a staff. A point was made, okay? Even, even, even by that action. But I just want to use that story as a reminder that demons do have power and do have authority. But they cannot do anything to you. They cannot do anything to me without going through the proper channels, if I may, okay? Like we discussed um, 
of a, with the in the with the life of Job. So we have the assurance that Satan's cause is already lost. Though Satan may do his worst, he cannot destroy the Christian any more than the cross could destroy Christ. So let's read 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. Chapter 2, verse 4. So let's start looking here at demons. Second Peter 2 4 says, God did not spare the angels who sinned, but threw them into hell, where, where they are kept chained in darkness, waiting for the day of judgment. You can read verse 5 as well. God did not spare the ancient world, but brought the flood on the world of godless people. The only ones he saved were Noah, who preached righteousness, and seven other people. So, let's look at the book of Jude. So, this idea that Satan is walking around, that the demons are walking around, and they're doing whatever they want to do is not really correct. We actually see in the Bible, I think I mentioned this last week, and if you don't get it, please make sure you say something about it, okay? There were times that God's people disobeyed God, right? Who did God use to teach them a lesson. He didn't always use something within themselves. Sometimes nations who did not believe in God would actually be used to teach Israel a lesson. They would come and, and um, start a war against Israel and then Israel would actually, Jewish people, they would end up suffering the consequences because of their disobedience. So Jude chapter 1, because that's all it has technically, um, verse 5 through 7 says the following. For even though you know all this, I want to remind you of how the Lord once rescued the people of Israel from Egypt, but afterward destroyed those who did not believe. Remember the angels who did not stay within the limits of their proper authority but abandon their own dwelling place. They are bound with eternal chains in the darkness below, where God is keeping them for that great day on which they will be condemned. So we get some insight and a reminder that there are limitations as to where they are, what they can do, what they can do. Demons were angels who joined Satan in his rebellion against God. So. Look at it like this. Here, I'm going to draw a little picture. See if this picture helps. Let me start by making a... Here you go. And that square, that is heaven. Okay? And then you have all this cloud here full of angels okay and one day one day one angel we'll call this person this this spirit we'll call them the devil okay the devil starts to develop these feelings that began with a thought and the devil wants to be not like God. He wants to be more than God. And I guess in a way that we can really understand it, this thing now becomes like a, like a political campaign. And then it's almost like becomes like a speaker and starts telling others, I guess, 
of his greatness. And then other angels begin to follow him. This is almost like when a church gets divided and people decide, oh, I'm packing, I'm leaving. And then these people end up following what the devil at that moment, Lucifer, the angel of light, was actually telling them. So these people, well, not people, but spirits, okay, which were angels, at a given point, really important to remember, they enjoyed a heavenly existence. So they were there. But then look at this. What did they do? They turned from God. That was their decision. And if you and I turn from God, which is equivalent to rebelling against them. We have the ability to go join them where they are. And what happened was that the devil and these angels, and I repeat, angels, even though we're talking about demons, I'm talking about angels right now. This group was evicted, for lack of words, kicked out from heaven. And then they were sent to hell. So now they're not there. And all the other angels that are there are angels that worship and glorify the Lord and recognize him as the way, the truth, and the life. And what has happened to them, we could see as a warning, even to us ourselves. Does that make sense? Yes. Good. Now, there's something else. So then based on my little drawing here and what I just explained, what would be another name for demons? If they used to be angels, now they are... Fallen angels. Fallen angels. There you go, sister. So they were there. They're fallen angels. Okay? And now they don't have that connection with God that they had at a given point. All right, let's see what do we have here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. If somebody finds it and wants to read it, that would be great. If not, I'll, I'm looking for it too. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 18 to 21. All right, it says, Consider the people of Israel, those who eat what is offered in sacrifice and in sacrifice share in the altar's service to God. Do I imply then that an idol or the food offered to it really amounts to anything? No. What I am saying is that what is sacrificed on pagan altars is offered to demons, not God. And I do not want you to be partners with demons. You cannot drink from the Lord's cup and also from the cup of demons. You cannot eat the Lord's from the Lord's table at the Lord's table and also at the table of demons. Or do we want to make the Lord jealous? Do we think that we are stronger than he? This is very important because it reminds us about the fact that I'll read this part again, verse 19. Um, verse 20. What I am saying is that what is sacrificed on pagan altars is offered to demons, not to God. So look at this. <clears throat> There's an altar, okay? And this is where we have to be careful. It is even possible that the altar may have the appearance that is not a pagan altar, but it is. 
How do you know? There are a few ways. Way number one, which is the most important, is through the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit gives you discernment. What does that mean? It means that the Holy Spirit helps you to differentiate between what is heavenly and what is not heavenly. That's one way. And way number two is, as you study the word of God, if you notice that there is something or someone that is not aligning properly to what the Bible tells you, and you can see that, now you know that they're not. So we have to be very, very careful. I think I mentioned this to you, that there, I think it's still there. Um, we actually had some students like two, two, three years ago that actually attended. It was a satanic church in Rockaway. Did anybody know that? No, I did not know that. Yeah. Who knew it was so close? Yeah, so a satanic church and they, you know, used the building and the only one big different thing was that it wasn't as, what's the, the best way to put it? It wasn't as advertised, you know, I would say as, as the usual churches, but they had a building and they, their service pretty much followed the same pattern of a service that we have at church. Only difference is that they were they had other rituals per se, uh, for lack of words, and they other practices, and also they were not praying to God. You know things like upside down cross, using a demonic Bible, all those things actually um, are in existence. And I mean, I didn't think about doing this but I, I will ask you guys tell me if you would be interested in doing this would you want to to discuss the origins of Halloween we will only do it if you want to it connects directly to to a lot of the things I just mentioned to you that's why it came to my mind is that something you guys would be interested to do later on Sure, Pastor Hector. I, I didn't quite hear what you said. Yeah, to to discuss uh, to discuss the origins of Halloween. Oh, Halloween. Halloween, okay. yeah, what Halloween is all about, the even um, you know, things that appear to also be very um sane and safe, like bobbing for apples that actually has a a, a use in witchcraft or foretelling, you know, telling the future, things like that. And, you know, personally, I, I'm all about, you know, understanding the word. And, and, and once you know, you can make decisions. I don't, it, it, you know, God did not call me or, or you, none of us, to go around judging people. It's just important to know the word of God and then we know how to how to apply it so I guess once we get closer to that time all right so we have here what I just read so demons influence individuals and societies by encouraging them to worship and follow false gods Paul warned against participating in demonic practices now this gets interesting because you might think, well, what is a demonic practice? Well, there are a bunch. And that's the thing. If you don't know that something is a demonic practice, you might partake of it without even knowing. Give you a perfect example. This is also connected to almost around that day. There is, um, anybody knows what November 1st is? What's celebrated on that day, November 1st, right after Halloween? It's a holiday that's, that's celebrated in many countries. And in Is our it all? Go ahead. Is it all saints? No. Yes. That's what it is. And in some countries, 
what they actually do is they they spend pretty much the day at the cemetery um, or the evening or they go for a while and what they do is they'll cook the favorite meal of this person that died and they will go to the they will go to the cemetery and they will pretty much have some people drop the meal off some people actually do like a, a spiritual ritual to like call the spirit of this person to actually come join them. And they actually, they'll sit and they'll eat around the, the area where this person was buried. And they will take a plate of food and they'll actually serve it to that, representing to that spirit that's actually going to be coming and is going to actually be eating that food. So, knowing things like that can help you to just be aware, even of the all decisions that you make, because um, you can end up, without even knowing, participating in something that is a demonic practice. Now, are you going to go to hell if you do it without knowing? Absolutely not, right? If we don't know, you know, we, we sinning means that you do something knowing that it is wrong and you proceed to do it. That is it. Okay. Doing something against God and you know it's wrong and you proceed to do it. Now, if you don't know something is wrong and you proceed to do it, God is going to call us to account based on our maturity and spiritual understanding. So Christians have no business engaging the kids in, acti in activities that demon, demons use to trap people in sin. Now, um, and you know, now that I mentioned Halloween, I, I'm going to just put in a little commentary here because, uh, you know, people have all their different opinions. Um, it's a matter of the heart, okay? And again, we're not called to judge people. So I have seen I have seen, um, you know, Christians, for instance, that instead of celebrating, quote unquote, Halloween the way it is, you know, they do a harvest fest. OK, and they focus on other things. So it kind of looks similar. But they're not they're not doing it with the same mindset. I've also seen seen other people that what they do is they celebrate the light of Christ. I don't know if you've seen that. And, you know, you go to those houses um, during Halloween and you will see those houses are all lit up and they pretty much become a house. Like, you know, like they take that opportunity to actually share the gospel of Christ with other people. So we have to just make sure that we have, I would say, um, an understanding and a reason why we're making that decision. So what activities today might cause people to willingly become uh, participants with demons? I mean, forget it. Look at Christmas. They're like Christmas and demons. Well, it's if, if someone or something can lead you astray from Worshiping God, that could in itself be or come from a demonic force, demonic um, uh, spirit that's actually trying to, to lead you or steer you away from God. So how um, Christmas becomes all about the gifts. All about the gifts, and then there's a dis disconnection. Uh, th th there is no connection with God. And when we look at the origins of everything, if we start looking even at the origins of, of um, you know, uh, Christmas, even that could be challenged. Um, having said that, where is your heart? Where is my heart with the actions that I am proceeding to do? That, that's kind of the, the, the main key that we have to look at. 
So while the people while while people who practice false religions such as New Age who seldom admit to worshiping Satan, he's actually the recipient of their worship. And the people that go to Satanist churches, for instance, they will blatantly tell you, "Yes, I worship Satan." I have actually seen um, T-shirts worn by kids at school and adults that actually aim to worship Satan. And it's very important also that you know this news. I don't know if you remember this news. I don't remember the exact details, but maybe somebody can help me here. I think it was in Washington there was a huge monument with the Ten Commandments. Anybody heard those news? And what ended up, it became um, that people were actually coming out and they were complaining about the fact that, you know, way, hey, you know, that's religion, and, you know, so then it, if you're going to allow that, they actually, people were complaining, they wanted to remove, remove. We don't believe in the Bible, blah, blah, blah. You know, we were saying this then. And, and they ended up posting up a, pic, a, a, a sculpture from a satanic church that is actually now displayed. And it's actually, it's pretty huge. It's actually pretty large. And you look at it and it is pretty disturbing. Has anybody seen that? That was all over the news. Has anybody seen that or no? No, no I haven't. All right, like, give me a second. Let me see if I can find it for you. Um, yeah, so this is a uh, back in back in August 17, 2018, Satanic Temple Protest, Ten Commandments Monument. And then what they do is here it is, Little Rock, Arkansas. So let me let me get out of here so I can show it to you. Let me open it one second. And it's kind of shocking because, you know, we think like, no, this, this is not. On it. Temple unveils. Baphomet. The name of the. Okay, so here it is. And there's like all this. Share. Beliefs and again, I don't want to spend the whole time showing you this, but Can you see it? Let's see if I can make it bigger. So this was in August 2018. All right, is that better? Yes. Okay. So you see, it has it has um. I mean, look at that. They got they got musicians. They got all these different people. And if you look, I mean, there's some everything in here has a meaning. You know, you have you know from the Star of David to oh, there's a video. Let's see. After the ad, of course.
Announced earlier this year, the new Hummer will actually be a GMC. The new Hummer is set to be battery powered with an option of one, right. two, or three so electric motors. Hummer, we'll see the see. Hummer EV in the fall of 2021. Four seconds. I'm Penny Cobberg-Halter. Well, more than 100 people gathered at the Arkansas State Capitol for the Satanic Temple's rally for the First Amendment. Just hours ago, the organization unveiling Baphomet statues. Our Maureen Glissavig tells us why they say this was a rally about rights, Maureen. Well, Janelle, it was quite a spectacle when folks gathered here hoping to bring a Satanic temple uh monument here on the capitol grounds meanwhile church members just right across the street holding signs hoping to spread god's love <laughs> an eight foot baphomet statue unveiled at the arkansas state capitol for the satanic temples rally for the first amendment sincerely <laughs> freedom isn't about just one group of people's beliefs it's about an inclusive idea that everyone can choose whatever it is whatever religious uh, affiliation or whatever uh belief system I, I don't know why it's not important for everybody i mean i stand for religious freedom and i mean that's all you really gotta say <laughs> like, and while members and supporters of the satanic temple want to see their statue on the capitol grounds after lawmakers allowed for the ten commandments monument church members at Thursday's rally telling KTV they're hoping to spread faith. God loves them and we love them. This is the best scripture that there is, John 3, 16. God loves us and he loves everyone. And that's what the message that we want to get out is all about love. These people are here in support of their beliefs and I'm here. All right. So, I mean, any thoughts about this? I'm surprised. Well, first, I'm just surprised that that even happened. But I'm further surprised that it especially happened in the South, which is known to be the Bible Belt. It's just, and it's creepy. That's that, that that's a that, that's a good way to put it up. Anybody else? Um, what one thing about it? Can you see the PowerPoint? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, um, what one thing about it is that it is, it's what that man said, and you know the the one man from the uh, Satanic Church. You may agree or disagree with what he said. You could have whatever opinion you think. But then we go to the Bible, and what does the Bible tell us? We have free will. But what's happening now in our society is that we, you know, we are expected to accept, for lack of words, because in reality, tolerate um, every other religion, every other belief. But when it comes to being a, a Bible believing follower of Christ, that could be viewed as old fashioned, or it could be viewed as judgmental, or it could be viewed as, you know, unmerciful towards others. And that's not really how, how, how things work. So um, when we look at here, spiritualists, um, who claim to channel dead people and psychics who claim to know the future can obtain their information from demons. Uh, it's, I know people who actually go to church. <clears throat> they believe in God. And when they're going to make a decision, they still go see a psychic. <clears throat> As if God did not have the power to talk to them or to connect with them as an individual. So let's look at Mark 123 because this this could be really concerning. Mark chapter 1 verse 23 to 27 it says the following 
Just then a man with an evil spirit came into the synagogue and screamed, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Are you here to destroy us? I know who you are. You are God's holy messenger. Jesus ordered the spirit, be quiet and come out of that man. The evil spirit shook the man hard, gave a loud scream and came out of him. The people were all so amazed. So they started saying to one another, what is this? It is some kind of new teaching. This man has authority to give orders to the evil spirits and they obey him. Does that still happen today? I haven't seen it. I haven't heard of it either. I've seen it. Um, I've seen it. I experienced uh, situations like that probably close to maybe 10 times in my life. Part of the reason I think Sister Millicent, um, here in, in this nation, we are so caught up with everyday life that sometimes spirituality doesn't take precedent or priority in our lives. And I had done this before. We have 365 days a year. And how many people, you know, that turns out, I, I think it's about 48 Sundays. So if out of 365 days, a person is never absent to church, that's still only less than, I mean, 48 out of 365 days. What was happening every, every other day? So I will tell you where I encountered and where I experienced these things. Um, when I used to, you know, in Puerto Rico, when I used to attend the church, this is actually the first, the first lesson I had about spiritual warfare. I was probably maybe nine, maybe 10. And it was like I was living a movie. I could say that now. At that time, I hadn't seen those, you know, like scary movies or heard anything like that. Um, but pretty much experiencing, even hearing, hearing a, a voice that was not that did not belong to the person, like hearing demonic forces speak through someone. I've seen that. I, uh, you know, just feeling an evil presence within the church. Um, and I mean, I remember that we had some services that this one, this one was memorable. Um, the preacher started to, to started to preach and all of a sudden they were interrupted. Now, you know, like during the preaching, right? That at that time, that's supposed to be a solemn time of, of reflection and connection. And you're listening and trying to apply the word. And no, this person got up. And started speaking and this person actually went all the way up to the altar and started to say things and the pastor ended up asking everyone this is this is you know one of the lessons you know be, being young and this is something really important that we also need to understand it is not a show it is not, you know, for people to start looking and to see. It is actually a moment where we have to connect with God because the only one that has the ability, the power, the authority to cast that demon out is not the pastor, is God. So, you know, in the name of Jesus. So, so the pastor, you know, asked everybody to, to, to focus, you know, in the Lord and call out to the Lord. And then he rebuked. He rebuked the, the evil spirit. I mean, it was a battle of prayer and, you know, just the Holy Spirit moving in a mighty way. And this thing probably lasted maybe 20, 20, 25 minutes. And you could actually, I, I was able to hear the conversation that the pastor was having with this. I'm going to call it a creature. <laughs> okay even though it was a person, because I actually happened to know this person. 
the you know the 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 one person um you know because it happened also they, even to teenagers that, that that i knew they just gave them themselves over into into evil things and very very um eye-opening i'm just i have like a, a wave of 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 stories in my mind i just don't don't want to expand too too much but I hope that that, that kind of gives you some, some sort of idea. If you go to countries that are very spiritual countries, people talk about the United States, yeah, we're a Christian nation. and But if you do the math, if all we do as a follower of Christ is go to church 48 Sundays a year and wait for Sunday again, and that's all we do. I'm not sure if that's enough. <laughs> it's probably not. <laughs> Mathematically speaking, I mean, I mean, just think about it like this: if if your paycheck was to be cut from what you earn out of the year to forty-eight days, would you be able to survive? No, no. <laughs> right? But funny enough, we expect to survive spiritually with that with that type of mindset. That's why, you know what, now we have technology, watching videos, using Zoom, um, volunteering at the church, um, you know, teaching, teaching, uh, you know, Bible studies or, or, or you know, children's church. Um, even, even going to do cleanup at the church, like, you know, about that, that's a form of volunteer too. Like doing those things, it's a reminder to stay connected with God. So, all right. So the destiny of demons has already been determined. Um, the enemies of God will someday be cast into the lake of fire along with Satan. Um, until then they have some limited freedom of movement. Jesus was able to remove demons from possessed people because of his authority over them. And the same authority is available to Christians today. Now, just because you're a follower, follower of Christ, it doesn't mean you can cast out a demon. I want to make that very clear. It doesn't mean that only some people can. No, I'm not even going to go as far as saying that because we serve the same God. But your mindset has to be in the right frame of mind. You have to be in the right um mindset in order to be able to be connected with god because if you were to try to come against an evil spirit and your mind is not where it belongs which would be connected with christ the enemy may end up having a party with you i know people that have gotten beat up because they actually came to confront uh and, and when i mean beat up i mean like Drag pushed against the wall and bumps and bruises and cuts and, and falling and because they came to to face to have that sp a spiritual um, encounter with the demon and they were not all prayed up. You have to be prayed up. And then even Jesus tells him, tells us our himself that there are some spirits that they won't leave unless there is fasting and praying. So fasting also has to be included in there. Now you take those 48 days, 48 Sundays, and you include no fasting. So look at this, 48 days a year, no fasting, no prayer, no Bible reading, no personal devotions, devotions, no worshiping the Lord. Then what are we doing? So I'll show you this. If you look right there on the, on the left side, can anybody tell me what those things are? Where, where did those pictures come from? It was the internet, of course. But where do you think those pictures are from? Do you know anything about video games? The answer is on the, on the middle picture there, where it says DMC. Devil May Cry. That's actually a video game. And those images there on the left are from the video game. So it's amazing that there are parents that would never 
you know, like allow any demonic things to come into the home, but they go and they buy this video games for their kids. I remember one time, uh, somebody I know, young man, he was probably 17 at the time, 16 or 17. He was playing this game as a matter of fact. This is many, many years ago. So I want to make that clear because the way the game looks now, it looks real. Like the characters, when you look at the faces, you could almost see these people walking down the street. Back then, it really wasn't as real. And listen to this, listen to the story of, as to what, what happened. Um, so he was there playing alone. Um, and then going around in the game, doing whatever task he had to do. And then all of a sudden, there's a demon that's coming. This is in the game. You know, the, the demon's coming. And the demon is coming towards him. And then all of a sudden, the demon actually starts to face the camera towards him. And the demon is running towards him. And the demon comes to, like, jump on him. This young man, I actually happened to be at his house when it happened to him. And we didn't even know this had happened. We ended up finding out so much later. We almost end up calling an ambulance because we didn't, we didn't even know about the game. I was, I was actually downstairs. I, I was with his brother. We were, we were at their house, Christian family. And I think, I think we were watching TV. We were eating something because we we're going to go play basketball. You know, just I'm a teenager. And when we went to his room, he wouldn't talk. He wouldn't move his eyes. I think he may have, you know, barely blinked, but he just froze. He froze facing the screen and he just stayed that way and he wouldn't talk. And we dealt with this for like half an hour. Um, you know, family decided not to call the ambulance because he was breathing and he had a, he had a pulse. We just, we prayed to the Lord and then he came back to his senses. And then he actually was able to explain what had happened to him. So then even looking over here, all these different types of signals and, and the things that they actually share even in video games. Um, so what are demons? Uh, why is it unwise to rejoice that we have the authority to cast out demons? So an attitude like that can be rooted in pride. Again, if you're acting on pride, now you are not acting based on the word of God. So you are not going to necessarily have a good old time coming against any type of demonic force. Instead, we must take the spiritual realm seriously. A big part of this remaining focus on, on who God is and what he has promised us. So it's not about, you know, we're, this is not Ghostbusters. That's not what I'm talking about. So let's look at some indications of demons possession possibly. So here we have, I would say, maybe take a picture of this or write down, jot down some of these scriptures because we're not going to read them all. But we have insane raving. So demons uh, possess people, often become mouthpieces for the demons. And that's what I share with you that I actually experienced. You know, one of the things I experienced when I was younger. Um, Self-destructive as well. Demons often uh, do evil things to the possessed in the process of ac accomplishing their goals, including often we see a lot of uh, self-mutilation, actually people running against walls and actually just hurting themselves. Um, antisocial behavior or nudity. Examples of antisocial behavior by demon-possessed people include public nudity, lunatic behavior, lunatic behavior, and um, also it's often accompanied by violence. Seizures also as well. Now, let me explain. This does not mean that if you have a seizure, you're, ha you're being demon possessed. There are medical conditions that cause some of this stuff. That is not what we're talking about. It just happens to be, <laughs> sorry, that a person who experiences a, a demonic possession could possibly potentially uh, show these signs. Any questions so far about this? 
some of the people, when I encounter some of these um, incidents with the demon possessions, I actually see, I, I observe those as well. Um, blindness, deafness, and muteness. During Jesus' time, these disabilities were often identified with demon possessions. Again, not all who suffer from these conditions are possessed. Very important to know that. Uh, supernatural knowledge also. The demons can see into the future. They're highly attuned to the spiritual realm and aren't limited to the physical body. So if you have to look at it like this. The enemy's out there and is listening, okay? Two plus two equals four. So if on your conversations you have actually outlined some sort of plan or you or there are certain things that you have discussed, notice what I'm saying. You actually have to speak them, okay? It's not just something that you just kind of a thing. If you think it, they can't hear it. If you speak it, they can hear it. You have a you have pain on your side and you say, oh man, maybe it's cancer. That's it. All of a sudden, there's a commercial that comes out about cancer and, and everything connected to cancer because you've already shared out loud that that was in your mind. All right, so let's see if we can finish in the next few minutes. Wanted to, to, to explain, to share this. This, this is the one, I, the article I told you about uh, the pastor. His name is Pastor Stephen uh, Waterhouse. So I, I, I like that it's, it's not too long. Um, I liked it because he's a pastor, you know, believer, but he's also not doing this only from a, from a perspective from a pastor, but he also has a brother who has schizophrenia. So schizophrenia can strike anyone. Um, there are, you know, in the Catholicism and Christianity, you know, as well, concepts of devils, heaven, hell, and so forth. Many Christians who research schizophrenia wonder about the demonic. And is my relative possessed? I'm not sure. Have any of you ever asked this question? About anybody that has a mental condition? Is there are people who believe that mental conditions are demon possessions. So in case you were not aware, the New Testament mentions demons over a hundred times, including, Ma including Matthew 8, 29, Matthew 10, 1, John 16, 11. And then you have those people, who, those others who believe, who ch choose to remain skeptical. But this stuff, you know, it still comes up in conversation. Many Christians who endure a family's battle with schizophrenia will have questions about demonic involvement. Okay, it often happens to have those questions. The Bible itself makes a distinction between disease and possession. Extremely important. It is not the same thing. This is why I actually um, why I chose to share this because I, I'm, we're going to look at how we, you can distinguish that it is not the same thing. Um, there are at least six factors to differentiate schizophrenia from demonic possession as described in the Bible. And we can see, we can see um, those to determine, you know, possession or if somebody has a neurobiological disorder. Okay, that's NBD. So, number one, attraction to versus aversion to religion. Demons want nothing to do with Christ. Conversely, people with NBD are often devoutly religious. There are people who are followers of Christ that have a condition. Um, irrational speech versus rational speech. In the New Testament accounts of involving demons, the demons spoke in, an, in a rational manner. Untreated people with schizophrenia will often speak in nonsense and jump rapidly between unrelated topics. So I hope this is helpful to you because this, this does help us to find that balance and not to have this mindset that, you know, people that suffer from mental disorders are possessed. Ordinary learning versus supernatural knowledge. Demons in the New Testament who would speak through people to convey knowledge that otherwise could not have been known to the possessed individuals. Those with NBD have no such ability to know facts with they, which they have not acquired by normal learning. A normal versus occultic phenomena. There is a there is an aspect to a demon activity that is just plain spooky, like what they show in um in movies. 
telepathy, trances, these have impact on others in the room, not just the possessed. With schizophrenia, the effect of the disorder is only on the disorder, not others. The claim to be possessed, authors who have clinically experienced both with demon possession and mental illness, believe those who claim to be possessed um, are very likely not possessed. Demons wish to be secretive and do not voluntarily claim to be present. So you, you usually, when somebody's possessed, they don't go around, they don't walk around with a sign saying, saying I'm, poss I'm possessed. I'll tell you some of the stories that I was sharing earlier. This is kind of how it came to be. You know how when we're at church, we'll say at a given point, okay, if anybody would like to have sex twice or, you know, let's say nobody comes up. Okay, is there anybody here at the church today that needs prayer for this or this or that? And then the person will come up and, you know, sometimes, you know, you get the anointing oil and, you know, oil is put up upon the head or just, you know, to put their hand upon the person or even just to, to have the hand by the person's head. And all of a sudden, when that was going to happen, there was just a, a, a crazy reaction on, on behalf of the individual. So you have here, you have the person trying to connect with God and you have this presence within them that it's fighting against doing it. And it becomes that battle. And then um, also effects of therapy. If prayer solves the problems, then it was probably not schizophrenia. If medicine helps alleviate the problem, then it was not demon possession. Any questions about this? Is this clear? Yes. Excellent. All right, so just show you a few pictures and then we finish up. Cartoon Network. They actually show some of the signs here in Cartoon Network. You can see sometimes a lot of this stuff within their cartoons. I'm sure if you knew that. When you, you know, looking at movies and seeing things that, for example, like for somebody to be able to walk like that down the stairs, that's not that's not a, a, a mental disability, okay? Because mental disability is not gonna is not going to to impact your human given abilities with your body and what you can do with your arms and so forth. Being able to climb a wall, to like literally walk onto a wall as if you were an animal, that's also not something that you know a medical condition would actually um, lead you to do. And some of these other games. Have you seen the game on the bottom right with the pencil? No. What's that? Charlie, Charlie. Um, they have they have these games and, and pretty much it's, it's similar to the Ouija board without all the all the um, all the letters and buying it or anything. Literally, it's just take, get a paper and write yes, no, yes, no. Mm -hmm. Take a pencil, put it on top of another pencil, and then you ask questions, and then the pencil will move by itself. And it will point to yes or it will point to no. It's crazy. It's crazy, but kids play it all the time. Wow. And when they're playing, when they're playing that game, they're actually interacting with demons. It's not. So very concerning. So if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. First Corinthians 10, 12. It's very important that we um, connect with the Lord and that we don't get caught up in, in the things of this world. Any questions before we close? Did you learn something, something useful today, I hope? A lot of, lot of topics of concern here. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to gather here today. We pray, Lord, that um, and ask that you speak to our lives, Lord, in a mighty way, and that you help us, Lord, be able to find a way to put your word into practice. Father, and never allow ourselves to be caught up 
Lord, with the things of this world. Father, may we find refuge in you and trust in you, Lord, and have the courage, Lord, to walk with you, Father, and never give in to whatever our society, our nation, our world, Father, wants us to accept, Father, as what, what is right, Father, but that we live our lives, Father, aligning ourselves with what is right according to your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Father, we ask that you bless everybody that is here today, Lord, and may we not be Sunday goers, Lord. May we be father of followers of you day in and day out. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 All right, everyone. God bless you. See you.